have turned away from God and walked away. Family members, mom, dad, walk in the presence of God. When everything around us may close down, and guess what? It may again. I know that we were closed down last year, and it may just happen again. I'm here to tell somebody today, walk in the presence of God. Don't think you have to do this all by yourself because he promises in the scripture that he's with you. And lo, I am with you always. Understand he didn't just write that just to fill up space. You know how it is whenever you're writing those papers in class. (laughs) Some of you put down stuff just to fill up space. I did it. The one thing about the Word of God, it was inspired by him. He wouldn't put it down if he didn't mean it. He says, you can walk through this world and hold your head up and understand, brother, understand, sister, that I am with you. The presence of me will be with you. Second, he says, protection. I love the synoptic gospels because you see two different points of view. Now, if you're in here today and you don't know what Synoptic Gospels is, I don't know much about it, but I know it's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Don't ask me for much more. It was four of those that saw the same thing and they recorded it in Scripture with a little spin or a little different perspective. You know, if you have a car accident and, and there, there was an accident on the side of the road as we were heading to a funeral the other day, I thought a lady had been hit by a car up here on 23 heading into Wayneville, and there was a lady in the ditch. Yeah, just tell them I'll call them back. Lady in the ditch. I thought she'd been hit by a car. So I pulled over, and I said, I don't know what's happened, but she's bloody, and she's in the ditch, and we need to get some help, and we need to find out what's going on. Well, there was a domestic dispute, to make a long story short, and the one was beating up on the other and there was about three or four around that scene and we were all talking and there was four different perspectives so we know how that is I said well I thought she'd been hit by a car and ended up in the ditch so I stopped the other one said well I saw from the other side of the road as I was going the other way I looked over there and and it looked like somebody was beating the tar out of somebody I was like well we got two different perspectives here well same with Matthew Mark Luke John protection She needed protection that day, I'm going to tell you. Matthew 16, it said, Afterward, he appeared unto the eleven, and they sat at a meal. And he, he reprimanded them, the Bible says, with their unbelief and their hardness of heart. Because they believed not them which had sent him after he had risen. So, and he said to them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He gives them instructions, just like Matthew did. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. That's what the Word of God says. And these signs shall follow them to that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. This is in the same Bible that you've got. And he says, and they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. You see, there's protection. When you're in Christ, when you walk according to Scripture, not only is his presence with you, come on somebody, His protection is there with you. Jesus appeared to them all. He rebuked them for their lack of faith of what he had done, what they had seen him do, and they just sat there, and they would shake their head in unbelief. This is not the Christ, this stubborn refusal to believe that he had risen. Oh, you remember the story. Well, old Doubting Thomas. Y'all remember him, don't you? Has anybody here ever been to Doubting Thomas before? Oh, yeah. Doubt, doubt, doubt. Well, you know, it's funny when you read this because, you know, Downton Thomas, he'll just have to come right on in here. 
He'll have to show me the scars before I believe him. As a matter of fact, I'll have to put my hand right where his scar is and feel it. So what did Jesus do? <laughs> he didn't even knock. He walked right on through the door. There was him in all of his glory. And I'm sure they were all flabbergasted of what had just happened. Let me tell you something. You may be going through the trials of life. You may have darts coming all around you. Some people may be trying to tear you down. But understand that God is for you. He's not against you. His protection is upon your life. When you walk in Christ, the protection is there. When you walk in him, the presence is there. I'm here to tell you today that I'm glad to walk with a Savior that has my back. Are you with me? Amen. So in this scripture, there's one thing that we must do. We as a church, we as a body of believers must preach repentance we must preach the risen Savior of Jesus Christ that has come back for each and every one of us that has took it upon the cross so that you and I could be saved and set free. Whatever bondage you were in, you have the right to be set free. Whatever the load is, it is there to be lifted by the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I'm glad I serve a God of protection. You want me to tell you why? Because I will preach forgiveness. I will preach protection. I will, I will preach repentance. I will preach redemption for every lost soul. And that is exactly what the church body must understand. That this right here, we have got to declare the name of Jesus. Each and every day, we've got to lift up his holy name and understand that he gives us the protection that we need each and every day. And you, my friend, you're a witness to this. You're a witness to the good things of God. You've heard the stories. You know how he set you free. You know how he's turned your life around. You know where you once was. It could have been last week. It could have been last year. It could have been a few years. But you know what mess he brought you out of. Preach repentance. Preach Jesus. Hey, there ain't none of us in here gone too far where he cannot bring us back. You know, I didn't think one of my elders at, at the previous church, I, I knew he wasn't Holy Ghost filled, and that's fine. Not everybody is, but I need to be Holy Ghost filled when I go to Walmart. I'm not lying. I had a handful of stuff the other day that was weighing me down. Are you hearing me? You've been there before. And there's 500 people ready to check out with two registers. Then they had to self-check out, and I said, they don't pay me enough to check myself out. I need the Holy Ghost to go in that place. You know what it's like when you turn that aisle and you see somebody you just really don't want to talk to, and you just, hmm. I'm going to go down the next one. Oh, you've done that before, haven't you? <laughs> I need the Holy Ghost. But this elder looked at me one time, and he was always critical of everything. And he said, you know what? Un one thing I know about Jesus is for years and years, you can walk away from him. You can turn your back on him. You can do your own things. Make your own decisions. Not ever think about what God would have for your life. But then whenever you reach that point and you stop and you say, you know what, I'm tired of walking this direction. I want to turn around. And he said, the instant you turn around, Jesus is there. I was like, whoa, that came from you. I was like, praise the Lord. It's not 20 years back to get to Jesus. Somebody needs to hear me this morning. It's not, well, I got to do this and I got to do... No, Jesus says, come as you are. <laughs> He doesn't call the qualified, but guess what he does? He qualifies the call. And guess what? I may not be perfect, but I'm qualified because I am in Christ Jesus. Whew. 
Sorry, Pastor. I hope I didn't get too carried away. But I had to take a break for a second. You see, after I got COVID a couple months ago, and I know it's early, I got 15 more minutes. Here I am stressing. Yeah, some of y'all heard you. You better hurry up, too. I'm counting. <laughs> when COVID hit me, come 4 o'clock now, I'm ready to take a siesta somewhere. I don't care where I'm at. I might be in conversation with you and start, don't think bad of me. It's just a medical condition. Okay? I may look right through you. And you may think I'm into it, but I'm like, I've done that to my wife, and I, I do publicly apologize. We, we just served 20, we served, celebrated. It's been a, we have served. It's amazing what COVID does to a person. It makes you say stupid things, I believe. We celebrated 22 years yesterday. So... Jennifer, if you'll stand up and wave at the people. <laughs> I know y'all looked at her and you said, what in the world? She lost a bet. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Pastor. <laughs> I like to walk in the presence of God. I like to walk in the protection of God. But you know... There's so many things this day that really get in our mind, maybe unintentional, and takes away our peace. I would much rather walk in peace each and every day than chaos, right? Well, the scripture tells us over in John, it says, in the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, they were running, scared. Well, you may call it scared up here. They, they were scared. I call it scared when I'm real scared. And Jesus came and stood in the midst of them. I like the way Jesus did this. Have you ever been at a place where you just didn't feel him around. Oh, I've been there. And it's at that place where I'm like, I've got to get in his presence. I've got to find his presence. I have got to have peace in my life. You will not live a long life if your mind doesn't have peace. You will worry about things. You will fret over things. But I like what Jesus did here. Peace found in John. Peace to you, he said. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. So he was saying that I'm not asking you to do something that I wouldn't do. Because the Father sent me, now I am sending you. You are full of me, you're full of the presence, you're full of the protection of God. Now I'm sending you out. Now some of us wonder, you know, I can't do this on my own. You're right, you can't. I can't minister effectively on my own. You're right, you can't. You need the presence and the peace of God with you. Now, peace is a wonderful thing. Now, I like Luke because Luke's just real, you know, Luke's the one that's got the to-do list. You know, he's got it together. Luke was a planner. Luke was intellectual. Luke, you know, I, I like being around intellectual people. You know what I'm saying? I try to everywhere I go make myself the, the least in the room. I want to be around people that, that are above me, you know, that, that can lead me. And I like here what Luke says because Luke is a planner. Because <laughs> he gives the plan of what, oh yeah, you've got the presence. You've got the peace. You've got the protection, but here you need a plan. I was a youth pastor at a church one time and the pastor came to me and said, I want you to go ahead and plan a year out. 
And I was like, a year? How do you do that? I mean, I don't know where I'll be in a year. You may fire me before the year's up. I mean, I don't know. You know, sometimes I just say what I feel. <laughs> Luke was like that. And you can see here in the scripture, and you can either take this either as a plan or a promise. Either one, it's, it's right. Then he said to them, thus it is written... And thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance and remission of your sins should be preached in his name. Beginning at Jerusalem, he tells them where to go, where to start. Beginning at Jerusalem. Beginning here. And then he says, and you are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise. Oh, I'm glad to have the promise. I'm glad to have the plan before me. I'm glad to have, don't you just like it so much better now that we have uh, GPS, we have that young man or young woman telling us where to go all the time? Have you ever not listened to what they say and ended up on that dirt road? Many times. And my wife's like, why didn't you listen to the directions? Well, I thought there was a shortcut. <laughs> yes, I'm guilty. Thought there was going to be a shortcut. You know what? There's no shortcut in the kingdom of God. Sometimes you, you got to maybe walk around 40 years. Come on, 40 days, 40 nights. You know, 40 in the scripture. You know how the Israelites, they had to wander and wander. Sometimes we have to bypass and we have to go by the same old start board over and over and over before God opens a door for our new avenue. I'm here to tell you that I like the plan that God has set before us. If you are with me, you will start right where you are here in Jerusalem and then you will spread it throughout the world. Listen, this is Easy Discipleship 101. Start where you are, then expand. Start right here where you are. Get your heart right. Get the presence of God living in you, and then go into all the world and preach the good news of Jesus. Because guess what? There's some that need to hear it. Oh, yeah, like some of those at Walmart that we've seen. <laughs> they need to hear it. So I have the presence. Follow me here. I have the presence of God. Walking with me. I have the protection because he promised me that, that as long as I'm in him, that he has protection over me. Now, I know in the scripture he tells him over there, over across the sea years ago, that they can handle a deadly serpent. Listen, I ain't in it. If one comes by me, you know what I'm going to say? Sick him on side, pass him on by. It ain't dwelling here. I ain't handling it. But he was promising them and saying that he has protection over us. Don't feel like that you're all alone. Don't feel like that, that you're open game to the enemy. Oh, you've been bought by the blood of Jesus. He has paid the ultimate price for your sins. Walk in the promises of God. Walk in the protection of God. Walk in the presence of God each and every day of your life. And I guarantee you when you look back, you'll say, look what the Lord has done in my life. I'm walking in the presence. I'm walking in the protection. I'm walking in the plan, the promises and I'm walking with peace of mind, knowing that if the day comes, if the end of time comes right now, that I will forever be with my Lord and Savior in the air when he calls me home. Yes, I'm going to walk in the presence. Yes, I'm going to walk in protection. Yes, I'm going to walk in the promises that God has given me. Yes, I'm going to do all these things. The musicians will come. I got one last thing. I know some of you out there may be thinking, well, that ain't the scripture that he opened up with. You're right. I saved the best for last. Acts 1 and 8. If you don't know it, you need to know it. If you don't know it, I'm sure you do know it. But you need to understand 
how it fits into your life. And you, my friend, shall be endued with power from on high. Oh, you better believe I enjoy walking in the presence. Come on, somebody. Y'all get with me. Stand up on your feet all over the house. I enjoy walking in the presence. I enjoy walking with the protection of God all over my life. I enjoy the plan that he has given us to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Some of you may not be able to go in all the world, but you can support the other side of the world. Buy a tree, change your life. Do we have any buy a tree, change a life people in the house? That's missions. That's to a good cause. That's to spread the name of Jesus to the utmost part of the earth. Oh, I enjoy walking in the presence. I enjoy his protection. Do you realize protection goes for every one of us? What if you could look down and see the course of your life and to see what God has protected you from? Mm. Oh, I just thought of a song. That old country song Garth Brooks used to sing. I thank the Lord for unanswered prayers. I could do a jig right there. Because I remember I'd come home. Oh, God, let her be the one. Oh, let this relationship work out. Oh, Lord. I thank the Lord for unanswered prayers. Things that I wanted to do. I know looking at me, you wouldn't believe it, but I wanted to go be a state trooper. Some of you saying, well, he ain't trooper material. Well, I was. I sat back relaxed for a few years. Quit my daily regimen. I was built for speed. Now I'm built for comfort. Anyone else in the house would say amen? I thank the Lord that he called me. I remember as a kid, I'd follow my dad around thinking I wanted to be like him as a kid. Then I come to my senses. Pastored for, oh Lord, how long? Almost 20 years, I believe. In state work for years. Now he's an overseer in Mississippi and he'll call me and tell me about what's going on. I'm thinking, I'm glad it's you and not me. But God called me. And I'm thankful. And you know, when I was on the course of doing what I wanted to do, there was no peace. None. Wanted to be a state trooper, I was doing a ride along. A friend of mine where I grew up, we was riding, having a good time in that old police car until the guns started firing. And my eyes was big as silver dollars. Thinking, well, what are we going to do now? That police officer jumps out of the car and says, get in the floorboard. I was like, are you kidding? This is going down right now. I mean, I ain't got the 30 more minutes. Just drop me off and then go find him. I remember in that floorboard of the car thinking, oh, God, if you got something else for me, let me know, please, immediately. And he did. Because I was open to anything. Ditch digger. I didn't care. Plumber. There might be some of y'all in the house. I, hey, my hat's off to y'all having to crawl under those little bitty houses. I was open to anything. Walmart greeter. I didn't care. At least I could share Jesus with them. <laughs> so they came in. But it was when I fully committed and said, okay, God, my life is in your hands. Do what you will with me. I'm available. I'm open to your will. I walked in his presence from that moment on. Sure, there was times that I kind of did my own thing. I knew where to go back. That's the key point here. We're going to fall. We're going to trip up. We're going to mess up. But do you know that you can go back? 
Do you know that he is there waiting to pick you up? Oh, it don't matter what you've been a part of. It doesn't matter what you've done. He's there to rescue the brokenhearted. Oh, I love walking in the presence. I love walking in the protection. I love walking by plan and having peace of mind. But you take all of that and you add one eight to it. Some of you are like, well, is he ever going to get to it? Yeah, I am right now. My friend, and you shall receive power. It's like that story I heard. Little boy walked out of the room and said, Dad, the light's not on. So Dad, as dads are, they like to show off their new tools sometimes. Oh, and I'm sure he goes to his tool cabinet, gets all of his tools, gets everything, even things he didn't need. Goes in that room. Begins to change the bulb. Gets his brand new ladder up there, changes the bulb. Goes to the breaker box, flips it, makes sure everything's right. Walks out, like most dads, still scratching her head. I don't know why that light's not coming on. Duh, you didn't turn the power on. You didn't turn the switch on. Oh, what happens in your life when you turn the power that is in you on this morning? Somebody needs to hear this. Presence is wonderful. Protection is great. Walking in peace. Walking in the plan. All that's awesome. But you flipped a switch on to the power of God in your life. He will take you places that you never dreamed that you could go. Mm. Those family members you've ever you've been praying for all these years, guess what? Something will click in their spirit because the power that you are carrying with you. You know what? You will become atmosphere changers when you walk into a room and there may be filthy talk and there may be all kinds of stuff going on. When you walk in that room, let me tell you something. The atmosphere changes. I desire to be an atmosphere changer when the power of God gets in my life. Let me tell you what. The best witness that I can be to this generation is you show them Jesus. Show them love. They're going to see it through me. We've got to, as a church, and I know not this one, but many churches, we've got to quit being so critical. I'm not going to drop it. <laughs> Don't get scared. It's, it's still in my hands. We've got to quit being so critical, so judgmental. I've seen it in my course of ministry. Well, you know what she used to do? She just don't look right. He just don't look right. He don't care. Listen, the best thing we can do is show the love of Christ. You know what? It'd blow half of your minds if you knew where Jesus tarried. If you read the scripture and read about the life of Jesus, the people he hung out with, hmm, it'd leave you scratching your head. You mean my Jesus hung out? Yeah, the sinners. Yeah. You know why? Not to be a sinner. Oh, no. To reach out his arm and say, welcome in. What I have is greater. What you have, my friend, it greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. Come on, everybody. Just lift your hands right now. I'm closing for the second time. You may be in life today, and you may have heard every point that I have shared with you this morning. And I hope I wasn't too long. I'm good. <laughs> and you may say, something sparked me this morning, right where you're at. I just want every head bowed, every eye closed. Maybe you would say, I want more of the presence of God. More of the presence of God. Come on, just lift your hands up. No one looking around, please. More of the presence. Yes, yes, I see hands all over the house. Yes. You know what? It's yours. It's yours. You know, Jesus is just as close as you want him to be. Oh, we're going to quit doing things our own way. 
And we're going to just turn it over to Christ today and say, Lord, I need more of the presence of you in my life. First, that starts to the sinner this morning if you're here. You know, all that you have to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is your Savior. And if that's you today, I want you to slip your hand up and say, I need Jesus in my life. I want to say the sinner's prayer. I have reached a point where I cannot go any further where I'm at. And I want Jesus in my heart. And you may be here today. And you say, I need protection. I need his protection. I've got to make some decisions. I've got to go through some things. Chaos in the family, whatever. I need the protection of God. Just stretch your hand up. Yes, yes, yes. Guess what? It's yours. He promises it to you. It's amazing that there's hidden promises in the Word that sometimes it just takes us digging it out to understand that He desires to protect us. Come on, you're here today. And you may say, I just have no plan for my life. It's like I've been traveling around the wilderness 40 years and 40, 40 days, 40 nights, 40 years, whatever it may be. There's no direction. Listen, there's a plan for your life. Lift your hand if you desire the plan of God in your life. Tough decisions. You're at the crossroads. Guess what? It's yours. It's yours. Maybe you're walking around today just in turmoil. Maybe your mind is going a thousand different directions. Guess what? There's peace. Come on, you want peace. You want the presence of God. Yeah. You want the protection of God. Yes. You want the plan of God. Yes. But do you desire the peace of God that passes all understanding in your life? Come on, just let it be known. As I look across this crowd, I believe each and every one of us desire the presence of God. We desire the protection of God. We desire the plan and the promises of God. We desire the peace of God. But right now, you just, you need to be full of the power of God. You know, each and every one of us at this moment should lift our hands and say, Fill me, Lord Jesus. Fill me, Lord Jesus. Let me have that supernatural power that you speak about in Acts. That I can walk, that I can, that I can lay hands on the sick and they recover. That I can do the exceeding and the abundant. Come on, if that's you, right now as they sing this song, I just want you to worship him. I don't know what is custom here. If, you, if y'all come around the altar, if y'all stay right where you're at, whatever you normally do, do it. But I just want you to get into the presence of God right now. And my desire is that you just be full of the power of God when you leave here to go into this world and preach Jesus and preach his name. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Yes, Cause I know there is peace within your presence. I sweet Jesus. starts to break declaring there is hope and there is freedom come on just lift his hand I speak Jesus speak his name speak his name speak his name cause your name is power your name is healing your name
just want to speak the name of Jesus over fear and all anxiety to every soul held captive by depression I speak Jesus cause your name is power opportunity to be here to minister. We would like to speak to you if you have any questions about LEAD, what we're doing, what we're about. Meet us back in the back and we would love to talk to you. God bless you. Let's give him one more hand. Thank you for being here so much. We appreciate you. Uh, we appreciate the work that you're doing. Uh, we're just going to close out in prayer. Uh, I appreciate you being here. Let's just pray for the week. There's a lot of uh, a lot of negative things happen in the world right now, and this song speaks true over all of that. Je there's power in the name of Jesus. So let's worship him. Let's speak his name. Let's go out and do that this week and be leaders. Uh, be leaders through the community and bring others to Jesus. So let's just bow our heads. God, we come to you this morning, and we thank you for all you do for us. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your presence, and we thank you for just the wisdom that you impart over us when we seek it. And just give us that wisdom. Speak through us and just let us be a light unto the world, God. Uh, just bless this week. Bless all those who need you and let us keep close to you. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Have a good week.